Welcome to the Mount Sinai Missionary Baptist Church of Memphis Incorporated YouTube channel. And thank you so much for joining us. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, help us to learn the value of acceptance and the worthlessness of rejection. Continue to help us to get our worship right. Teach us that it is not so much as uh, the place that we worship as it is the who we worship. In Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Amen. Our text for today is found in the book of John, chapter 4, verse 16 through 26. I'm reading from the English Standard Version. Verse 16 says, And Jesus said to her, Go, call your husband, and come here. And the woman answered him, I have no husband. And Jesus said to her, You are right in saying, I have no husband. For uh, you have had five husbands, and the one you have now is not your husband. What you have said is true. And the woman said to him, Sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. Our fathers worshiped uh, on this mountain, but you say that in Jerusalem is the place where people ought to worship. And Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me. The hour is coming when neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem will you worship the Father. You worship what you do not know. We worship what we know. For salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is coming and now is now here when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father is seeking such people to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. And the woman said to him, I know that Messiah is coming, he who is called Christ. And when he comes, he will tell us all things. Jesus said to her, I who speak to you, am he. Our subject for today is Jesus knows us intimately and doesn't reject us. Jesus knows us intimately and doesn't reject us. Jesus knew all about this woman and didn't reject her. Jesus knew that Peter would reject him, but he didn't reject Peter. Jesus knows all about us all of our dark secrets, our shortcomings, our bad habits, our tempers, and our lying and stealing habits, knowing us intimately and yet promises us that he will never leave us nor forsake us. Now, two things I, I want to uh, pull out of the text that uh, we, are, uh, we, sh we should try to grasp today. The first one is Jesus as a prophet, and then Jesus as the Christ. The only way to prepare the soil of the heart for the seed is to plow it with conviction. That's why uh, Jesus told her to go get her husband. He forced her to admit her sins, and there can be no conversion without conviction. There must first be conviction and repentance, and then there can be saving faith. Jesus had aroused her mind and stirred her emotions, but he also had to touch her, uh, her conscience, and that meant dealing with her sin. I have no husband was the shortest statement she made during the entire conversation. Why? Because now she was under conviction. Her mouth was stopped. Romans chapter 3 verse 19 and 20, and this is the New American Standard Version, uh, it says, now we know that whatever the law says, it speaks to those who are under the law, so that every mouth may be closed 
and all the world may become accountable to God because by the works of the law, no flesh, no flesh will be uh, justified in his sight for through the law comes the knowledge of sin. Key point in those two verses in verse 19 was every mouth shall be shut. This woman is talking less than she had started out because her mouth had been shut. And when you find out how much, how sinful you are, that tends to shut you up. Now, this was the best thing that could happen to her. So often we overlook the fact that God gives us two ears and one mouth. Perhaps the reason for this is so that we can do more listening than talking. James chapter 1 verse 19 says, This you know, my beloved brethren, but everyone must be quick to hear, slow to speak, and slow to anger. However, instead of listening to Jesus, she tried to get him on a detour by discussing the difference between the Jews and the Samaritan religion. It is much more comfortable to discuss religion than to face one's sin. Because of her loose lips, Jesus was able to reveal her spiritual ignorance and she did not know who to worship, or where to worship, or how to worship. He made it clear that all religions are not equally acceptable before God, and that some worshipers act in ignorance and unbelief. The only faith that God will accept is that which came through the Jews. Jesus came through a Jewish ancestry and he came through 42 generations of Jewish, Jews, corrupt generation. They were corrupt generations, but each one chosen by God to be a part of his plan for the salvation of all that would accept it through his son, Jesus Christ. The Bible is of the Jewish origin, and our Savior was a Jew. The first Christians were Jews. A religious worker in an airport once uh, told me that the world de world's deliverer came from Korea. And this was back in the 70s or something, way back there. But Jesus said salvation is of the Jews. Only those who have the indwelling Holy Spirit and who obey the truth can worship God acceptably. It was a devastating statement to say that worship would no longer be limited to the Jewish temple. Perhaps uh, we've seen a pre we were, perhaps we've seen a prelude of God's unfolding plan in the work of the COVID-19. Uh, just throwing that in there. Now, this ties in with John chapter 2, verse 19 uh, through 21, and also Stephen's statement in Acts chapter 7, verse 48 through 50. The John scripture, chapter 2, verse 19 through 21, and this is the New American Standard on the bridge uh, version. It says, Jesus answered them, destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews then said, it took 46 years to build this temple and you will raise it up in three days. But he said, but he was speaking of the temple of his body and his body is the church, the temple of the living God. His body is uh, the born again believers in Christ Jesus. Now to the Acts uh, text, it says, uh, this is Acts chapter 7, verse 48 through 50. It says, uh, however, the Most High does not dwell in houses made by human hands, as the prophet says. Heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. 
of my feet. And, and what kind of house will you build for me, says the Lord? Or what place is there for my repose? Was it not my hands which made all these things? Now, the John's gospel clearly reveals that there is a new sacrifice. And John chapter uh, 1, verse 29, talks about a new temple. John chapter 2, verse 19 through 21, and chapter 4, verse 20 through 24, talks about a new birth. And then John chapter uh, 3, verse 1 through 7, talks about a new water. And then John chapter 4, verse 11, talk, uh, the Jews uh, reading this gospel should realize that God has established in Jesus Christ a whole new system of worship. The old covenant law has been fulfilled and set aside, not done away with, but fulfilled. Now, we talked about the prophet of Jesus, Jesus as a prophet. Now let's look at Jesus as the Christ. It's clear that the disciples of Jesus didn't understand most of what Jesus was teaching them. And it's that way with us in this day and time. Without the Holy Spirit, we'd be so lost. Now, you can tell that they didn't understand by their statements. They were looking for something instead of listening to hear something. When we're looking for something, our response will always be out in left field. We are to walk by faith and not by sight. I'll say this and then move on. We need the Holy Spirit to continually give us an understanding of what Jesus was and is trying to teach us. In spite of this woman's ignorance, there was one truth this woman did know. She knew that the Messiah was coming and would reveal the secrets of the heart. Now, where did she learn this truth? I don't know. But that seed had laid dormant in her heart until that very hour, and now it was going to bear fruit. Jesus' response to her statement was literally, I that speak to thee, I am. There's that I am again. He declared to utter the whole, he, he, he dared to utter the holy name of God, I am. At this point, the woman put her faith in Jesus Christ and was converted. Immediately, she wanted to share her faith with others. So she went into the village and told the men that she had met the Christ. And when you consider how little spiritual truth this woman knew, her zeal and witness put us to shame. But God used her simple but truthful testimony. And many of the people came out of the village uh, to the well to meet Jesus. The rabbi said, it is better that the word of the law be burned than to be delivered to a woman. That was the saying in that age, in that time, that women basically had no rights and no worth. But Jesus did not agree with that narrow minded prejudice. Why? Why did she leave her water pot when she hurried back to the village? For one thing, she had the living water now within and was now satisfied. Also, possibly, she might have uh, intended to come back later 
And perhaps in the interim, the disciples and Jesus could use the vessel to satisfy their thirst. Gone were the racial barriers and battles that had existed before. They were all one in faith and love now. This woman did not come to faith in Jesus Christ immediately, uh, but it did happen. Jesus was patient with her, her, and in this, he sets a good example for us in our own personal work. Be patient with those that don't know Jesus. Now, certainly, she was the least likely prospect for salvation, yet God used her to win almost an entire village. He came down through 42 corrupt generations so that he could touch uh, or be touched by our infirmities, our weaknesses. He was tempted in all of the ways that we are yet without sin. He became sin in our places so that we could become the righteousness of God just as he was and is. One Friday on an old rugged cross on a hill called Calvary, after coming down through 42 generations of corrupt generation, Jesus got off in a little town called Bethlehem and he went to Calvary and he died for sinners like you and me. And they buried him. But early Sunday morning, he rose with all power in his hand. Up until this woman met Jesus, she lived a dying life, a defeated life. But after meeting Jesus, she became a living soul, a living spirit and she will live in throughout eternity. Thank God for Jesus. Thank God that he knows us intimately, and yet he doesn't reject us. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, thank you so much for not re rejecting us, and the reason you don't reject us is because you love us so much. Thank you for your faithfulness. And we ask that you would help us to walk uh, with you as Enoch did while we're here so that we can walk with you in eternity. In Jesus' matchless name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us today. I pray that God's word will bless you in a mighty way and that somebody else might be blessed through your testimony. Take care. We'll see you further on down the road. Bye-bye.